Well, good evening. Let's see who can jump on here with us tonight. Hallelujah. There we go. There's Gala. And who else? Trish, Chris, Scott, Becky. All right, now we're jumping on. While people are signing on, let me just encourage you to share and tag this with a friend. You can share it right now uh, with someone. Um, while we're getting ready to get started, I want to say thank you to everyone that shared it um, last week. You shared it after the fact, so feel free to do that, to um, post, share, uh, comments that you like it, all of that. And so it looks like we've had some other people jump on, David and Mary, and then Uncle David. So good to see you guys on tonight. Says we have nine. So let's go ahead and get started. I was going to save this, uh, um, this word until next Wednesday and preach it as part of my Cancel the Noise uh, there's Marilyn and John. Good to see you guys. Um, but I just felt pushed of the Lord to share it here um, in this format tonight on 714. I'm calling it Cancel the Noise 2, uh, not because it's a part two, um, but kind of T-O-O, -O, Cancel the Noise 2, like 714. Um, so it's not really the message that I would have preached, but it's going to be the material that I would have covered. And so I'm not going to be preachy tonight, or I'm not going to be lengthy. Maybe I should say it that way. Um, oh, welcome, Donna. Good to see you. I don't know if Terry's on uh, with you or not, but uh, welcome. Good to see you on tonight. So cancel the noise too. In Isaiah... 3021, this is one of the verses I used with the first cancel the noise message. It says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Wherever, or excuse me, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left hand. So the voice is going to say, this is the way, walk in it whenever you turn right, whenever you turn left. So I want you guys to, to be thinking about that. Looks like my brother Mike and uh, Billy's on, so good to see you guys. So the concept that I want to talk about tonight is rise above the noise. Rise above the noise. We talked about there's all kinds of noise out there. Looks like Liz and Jay are on with us. Good to see you. All kinds of noise out there, all kinds of static, all kinds of sounds, all kinds of things vying for our attention, but we need to rise above the noise. God is calling us higher. It's time to rise above the noise. It's time to take our prayers and our listening to another frequency. It's time to take our prayers and our listening to another frequency. A frequency where God speaks and we listen. Not just hear, but where God speaks and we listen and we obey. In this book right here, it's backwards, sorry about that. Didn't think about that. Should have flipped the screen. Um, the Ultimate Voice by Oral Roberts. He wrote it when he was 90 years old, just a couple of years before he passed. He said in this book, every person can hear God's voice, but he has to be listening. Everyone can hear the voice of God. You just have to be listening. Everyone can hear the voice of God. You just have to be listening. Tonight 
on uh, one of the other prayer meetings that I was kind of watching, uh, the minister that was leading the prayer meeting, Dr. Brian Cutshaw, said, let's tune our ears to a heavenly beat. Let's tune our voices to what God is saying. Let us have a submissive sound, a sound like someone who has heard from the master, right? So when I heard Dr. Cutshaw say that tonight, I knew that I was on the right track with this message. Hey, good evening, Taylor. Good to see you tonight. I knew that I was on the right message. It's time that we go higher, that we take our listening to another frequency, a place where we can hear God's voice. But listening, listening is positional. Obedience is relational. And we'll talk about both tonight. But listening is positional. Seven times in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, Jesus speaking to the seven churches, seven times he said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Seven times. He who has an ear, we got to tune our ear to the frequency of heaven. It's time to rise above the noise. It's time to take our prayers, our prayer life, our lifestyles to another level. It's time that we move out of just giving God our gimme list or our wish list or our dream list and begin to position ourselves in the place of prayer until we hear God's voice and then begin to pray and obey the command of his voice. Like I said, listening is positional, obeying is relational. Oral Roberts again in this book says, there is only one standard for obedience, a total yes to whatever God commands, a total yes to whatever God commands. He goes on to say, when you hear his voice, and I've added word because Isaiah said you will hear a word. God's voice is the word. God speaks the word. God is the word, or Jesus is the word made flesh. So God speaks in his word. God speaks to us in prayer. God speaks to us in audible voices. God speaks to us in still small voices. God speaks to us in his spirit. Whenever you hear his voice or hear his word, be quick to obey. And so the communion table, as we prepare for communion, is both positional and relational. You see, I believe that when we receive communion, not just here on 714, although hopefully this does happen, but sometimes we have other things that we're taking care of when we're on 714 and our agenda kind of moves along those patterns. But tonight, I want us to think that as I partake of communion, I am positioning myself to hear the voice of Christ. I'm positioning myself to hear the voice of Christ. Revelation 3.20, we've heard it for years. If you're churched at all, you've heard it for years. Hey, good evening, Kathy. Good to see you. Glad you jumped on, Cindy. Glad you're on. We've heard for years, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, if any person hears my voice and opens the door, I will, in the old King James, say sup or sop. Like Jesus said, or excuse me, Peter or John or whoever it was, said, Jesus, who's going to betray you? The one that sops with me. So this is the meal. In the New King James, it uses the word eat. Whoever opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and, and he with me. 
We're going to enjoy a meal together. We're going to dip bread together. So I want you to think about this. The communion table is positional, but it's also relational because it's out of our hearing that we obey the Lord. It's out of our opening the door and him coming in to us. And him sharing with us a meal or him sharing with us what his desire is for our lives, what he wants from us, what he desires us to be or to do. And when we obey that voice and we go out and we witness or we go to church or we read our word or or we become his disciple and we take up our cross and deny ourselves and follow him and we say, Lord, I'm in this all the way. You are my Lord. You're my master. You're my king. You're everything to me. When we do those things, right, he is in the midst. He is working. So I want us to get our bread and our juice ready. And I want us to, to if, if you can, maybe, maybe it's not in a away because I didn't prepare you for this, but I'm going to ask you to take your bread and and maybe it'll fit in the communion cup. Maybe it won't, but I'm going to ask you that, that Jesus is in the room. He's here. He said, whenever you do this in remembrance of me, right? Whenever you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst. He's in this room. So Lord Jesus, right now, we welcome you. I know that as I dip this bread into this juice, that you are here with me. You are here with me. I celebrate your body and I celebrate your broken life, your broken body that makes me whole. I celebrate the sacrifice on the cross that forgives me of my sin and heals my spirit, my soul, and returns me to you in relationship. So we dip tonight and we receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in the room. He's in the room. Go ahead and receive the rest of the juice. Lord, you're in the room. We hear you. We sense you. Hallelujah. Father, Father, Father. Would you just take, I know it's going to be awkward, but let's just count it out. Would you just take a few seconds, let's try 15, and just worship him. He's in the room. I feel him in my house. I feel he is in the room. We're using the communion table tonight as our portal, as our way to rise above the noise, to settle our spirits, to settle our consciousness, and to wait on First Samuel chapter three, young Samuel was the servant of a disobedient priest. And the word of the Lord was valuable in those days. It was rare. And before the light went out in the tabernacle, God called young Samuel. And after some coaching and some help from even a disobedient priest, someone who probably hadn't heard God's voice in a long time, but he was astute and wise enough 
to know that God was speaking to the boy. He said, when you go back and you lay down and you hear the voice again say, Samuel, Samuel, you say, here I am, Lord. Your servant listens. I want us to do that tonight. When we step off of 714, I want us to continue this mood. And I want us to listen for the still, small voice of God. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever the Lord tells you to do tonight, I want you to do it. If it's something that you've been hesitating to do, if it's something that you've been fleecing and asking the Lord to show you for sure, is this your will? Is this something you want me to do? You know, one thing I've learned, if it's me, it'll go away. If it's God, he'll keep on knocking. He'll keep on asking. He'll keep on pressing. So Father, me and all of my family and friends who have joined around the communion table of Jesus Christ tonight, it is our desire to rise above the noise of this world and to hear your voice plainly and clearly. I hear the Lord saying peace to someone tonight. I hear the Lord saying, I'm still in the healing business. Be patient, my child. I'm hearing the Lord say, I am still at work. I know you're tired of waiting, but the time of fulfillment has not yet come. But wait, wait is an act of obedience when we've been instructed to wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Your servants are listening, Lord. We want to rise above the noise. And we want to position ourselves relationally around your table, not to just listen, but to do, but to act upon your word. I hear the Lord saying to someone, and this is gonna be uncomfortable to you. Whoever this is for, this is uncomfortable, but it's from the Lord. I hear the Lord saying to you, let it go. Forgive them. Harboring it in your heart is not hurting them. It's only hurting you. Let it go. And when you do, you're going to feel a release tonight. You're going to feel a release tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, do it. I just sense him. I, I just sense him. Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs up. Does anyone else feel the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, sub, just kind of hovering? Maybe you're not in your kitchen or your dining room like I am. Maybe, maybe you're in your living room. But do you feel him in the room where you are? Isn't it thick? Isn't it rich? Isn't it real? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for those responses. Thank you for those responses. I see them. They were like fireworks. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. God, we're listening. I, I just sense God, God saying to someone, it's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. I don't know what that means. And it may sound simple, but listen to me. It really is going to be okay. And I hear God saying to others, take that step of faith. I am the one that opened that door for you. Step into that door. Step in. Be my light. Be my witness. 
I am there. I am with you. I am the author of this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just sense we need to stay in this mode. I, I know that, that you have loved ones that need saved, and I know that many of you might have prayer needs, but I just feel like we need to step away right now, and we just need to continue in this. I'm going to continue in this. If you have a prayer request, put it in the comments column, and uh, whether we're on or whether it goes off, and, and I'll read it later. I'm going to be praying in my living room a little bit longer. Um, I just, I just got to hear his voice. Now that I'm at this table, now that I'm at this place, now that I've positioned myself here, I don't want to leave. I want to receive everything that he has for me and everything that he has for Twyla and everything that he has for our family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to stay in this mode. Take another 10, 15 minutes if it, if it takes that long. Stay in this mode. Amen. Twyla and I love you. We bless you. We pray God's peace on you. Join us Sunday morning, 1045 North Elliott Church, either in person or the North Elliott Facebook page. God bless.